Welcome to the Jada and Stitches show. Today we've got a cute back to school project for you that is both cute and useful. This little pencil shaped drawstring bag can hang off your backpack or your purse or your school bag and it's the perfect size to keep little things in that you regularly reach for that you don't want to get lost in the bottom of your bag. We were thinking little jars of like hand wash or hand sanitizer, maybe that stuff you've got to clean your eyeglasses, lip chap, lipstick, little bottle of perfume maybe, even an inhaler. <laughs> it's the kind of stuff you always have to keep with you, but you don't want it to get lost and you need it sort of at hand, nice and quick. This little thing doesn't take very long to make. You can use cotton, acrylic, any fiber you've got lying around, whatever colors that say pencil to you, and it's a pretty quick project too. So let's grab our hooks, grab our yarn, we'll head on over to the craft table, and we will stitch up a little tiny pencil, drawstring, backpack, dongle <laughs> together. In order to make our little pencil drawstring backpack dongles, you're going to want some colors that remind you of a pencil. I've got black, beige, yellow, gray, and pink. Now, of course, you can use any color you want in here for the gray. You might use gold, you might use the beige again, whatever you want, whatever makes you think of a pencil. You need about a yard of black, two yards of beige, you want around 10 yards of yellow, about a yard or less of the gray here, unless you use the black or the beige again, you just need a, an extra yard for this area. And then you want around four yards of the pink color. If you're not going to use ribbon for the little ties, you want to crochet ties instead, like by chaining them, then you can use any color you want. You probably just want to have an extra yard of that color lying around. So not very much yarn in order to make this project. I'm using a size four medium weight acrylic yarn, but of course you can use cotton or wool, whatever you've got lying around for this, the actual fiber doesn't matter. And if you're using a DK weight yarn, you might want to size down your hook by a half size. I'm using a 4.5 millimeter hook, also known as a 7 in the US or the UK, but if you're using DK weight yarn, I recommend a 4.25 or 4.0 millimeter hook. That's a G6 in the US or um, a 7 or an 8 in the UK. You want a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, and like I said, you can use a little bit of ribbon or you can just chain ties in order to cinch your little sack shut. You want about 10 inches or 25 centimeters per tie. And once you've got all that together, we can get started. We're going to begin at the point of our pencil. So this is the graphite part. This is where I used black and I've made one here. I'm going to use a different color to demonstrate though because black is sort of difficult to see. So whatever color you're making your graphite, you're going to grab that now. For demonstration, I'm going to use yellow. We're all going to begin with a cinch circle. And once you've cinched, got your cinch circle kind of created there, you've chained one to secure it, you're going to single crochet four stitches. So four single crochet into that cinch circle. We're taking care to work over top of that little short tail because that's how we're going to cinch everything up. This whole project is worked in the round. So that you've got one, two, three, four single crochets worked into your circle. Grab that little tail, cinch it up nice and tight you're going to reach around to the first stitch you made and we're going to start row two right in that stitch. We're not joining with a slip stitch. We're going to single crochet directly into it. So get your hook in there. It might be a bit tight. I'm going to work over top of my little short tail just to kind of keep weaving it in as I go. We're going to work two single crochet into that first stitch that was the first stitch of row one. So the first two stitches of row two are worked into that stitch. Can sort of roll it up on the tip of your finger to make that next stitch a little more easy to get to. Single crochet once into the stitch after that. 
two single crochet into the next stitch so two single crochet into the next stitch and into the last stitch of row one you're going to single crochet once so we had four stitches at the end of row one we've worked two single crochet one single crochet two single crochet one single crochet around that first row we now have six stitches at the end of row two you can just sort of poke your finger into it so you can get sort of a little cone shape happening and for row three and the last row for our graphite color we're going to work two single crochet so you're going to find that next stitch there it is there so into the first stitch of what was row two two single crochet into the next stitch this begins row three single crochet once into the stitch after that two single crochet into the next stitch single crochet once into the stitch after that two single crochet into the next stitch and one single crochet into the stitch after that so two one two one two one that gives us nine stitches all the way around and before we finish off row three we're going to single crochet once into each of the next two stitches this is going to even up the little edge of our cone shape so we're single crocheting once into each of the next two stitches this isn't going to change your stitch count you will still have nine stitches all the way around but it does make the tip of your pencil a little more even all the way around to finish off row three you're going to slip stitch into the next stitch you're going to snip your yarn and fasten off snip your yarn fasten off if you want you can take a moment to weave that tail in or you can work over top of it for row four I'm going to work over top of my tails as I go make sure that is nice and tight pull it nice and tight and you're going to see a little bit of a false stitch here so I'm just going to point out this was the last stitch of the row and then we slip stitched there's the slip stitch there and we fastened off so this is the knot this is the little slip stitch and that little stitch actually doesn't count so this is the last stitch here it's very important that you can identify that stitch it's usually the full stitch just before that knot because that's where we're going to join our yarn for the next row and now we're moving to the beige color this color here so whatever color the wood part of your pencil is you can grab that color now and we're going to join it visit our shop and purchase a pattern you'll help support our show and we'll put a link to our shop in the description box down below we're all going to take our pencil wood color so I'm using a beige color here for the wood part of my pencil we're going to put a slip knot on our hook pick up the little nose cone of your pencil remember there's the knot there's a slip stitch just before it and then there's the, the last real stitch we're going to join our yarn with a single crochet in that stitch so we pick up a loop and single crochet so you've joined with a single crochet this little floating stitch here is the top of that first single crochet before we leave we're going to single crochet once more into that same place so you're beginning with two single crochet in the same stitch and the next thing we're going to do is put a single crochet underneath that fastened off knot so if you pull up on it you can see the little the little space underneath it it's where you fastened off your black color so you're skipping the false stitch you're skipping over top of that knot and you're anchoring your next stitch underneath the whole thing I'm still working over my short tails this is just so that we don't end up with a funny little jog as we single crochet all the way around so we begin with two single crochet single crochet once into the next stitch single crochet once more into the stitch after that I promise it'll be easier to see when we get around you should be able to see the top of your stitches though pretty well 
So just to reiterate, we joined, there's the knot, that's the false stitch, that was the slip stitch, so we're skipping that. We joined in that last stitch of row three with a single crochet, single crocheted once more into it, and then skipped over this entire section here and worked our next stitch underneath that little fastened off knot right there. You can see that little hole. And then regular single crochet from there on out. So two single crochet, single crochet into the next two stitches, and two single crochet into the next stitch. Single crochet once into each of the next two stitches. So two, one, one, two, one, one. And we're gonna do it once more. Two single crochet into the next stitch. And single crochet once into each of the next two stitches. And that brings us all the way back around. I'm gonna tuck that little tail into the inside of my nose cone now. You should have 12 single crochet worked all the way around for row four. That brings us right up against that first single crochet that we joined our yarn worth with, and we're going to work directly into that for row five. So get your hook in there. We're still expanding. We're going to work two single crochet into this stitch. Single crochet once into each of the next three stitches. and then repeat twice more. Two single crochet into the next stitch. Single crochet once into each of the next three stitches. Repeat that once more, you'll be up to 15 stitches at the end of row five. At the end of row five, you'll be back here. You might see just a little hint of a, of a dip in your yarn. Don't worry, that's gonna disappear when we keep going. For row three, we're still using the beige color or the pencil wood color, and we're going to increase again. So we're going to begin the row with two single crochet worked into the first stitch. So two single crochet into the first stitch. Single crochet once into each of the next four stitches. And then repeat that whole thing twice more. Two single crochet into the first stitch of the set, single crochet into each of the next four stitches. We're going from a stitch count of 15 to 18. At the end of row six, so you've worked your last stitch, you've got 18 stitches. We just want to single crochet once into each of the next two stitches, sort of like how we finished off the graphite section, or the little nose cone section of our pencil. So single crochet once into each of those next two stitches. It won't change your stitch count. It does bring you up to that little itty bitty jog in color there. And you're going to slip stitch into the next stitch. This slip stitch is not a real stitch, this little guy here. We're gonna be ignoring him. We're gonna fasten off our yarn. There we go, nice and tight. This here, this little stitch, is the last single crochet we did in that row, then we slip stitched and fastened off. So this whole thing here, you're going to skip. You'll be using the space underneath it. So if you pull up on that, you can see that space, that's where the stitch will be going after you've worked in here. We're going to join our yellow with a single crochet in that stitch before the whole fastened off thing. So now we're into the actual pencil paint color. So whatever your pencil color is, I'm using yellow. You might like orange, you might like, ooh, a colored pencil color, whatever you like. We're gonna begin with a slip knot on our hook. We're gonna join with a single crochet in that stitch before the whole fastened off thing. I'll be working over top of my short tails. There we go. We've got one last row of increasing to do. So row seven is our last row of increasing. So into that same place that we joined with a single crochet, we're gonna single crochet once more. That counts as two single crochet worked into the same stitch. We're gonna reach over to that space underneath where we fastened off. I'm holding up here, there's the nice big space for us. Helps to keep your stitching as tight as possible. 
So single crochet into that space and now we're going to single crochet into each of the next four stitches as well. All right, so what have we got? We've got two single crochet worked into the first stitch and a single crochet worked into each of the next five. You're going to do this twice more, so two single crochet into the next stitch, single crochet once into each of the next five, do that twice more, you'll be up to 21 single crochet stitches all the way around at the end of row seven. Stitch number 21 brings us all the way back around. It butts us up against that single crochet that we joined our yarn with. So you should have something that looks like this. And now rows eight through 15 is just single crochet in each stitch all the way around. So we're gonna work the first stitch of row eight into what was the first stitch of row seven. We're not joining our rows with a slip stitch. We are just single crocheting in each stitch around and around and around. You're gonna continue just with this color single crocheting each stitch all the way around until the end of row 15. You'll still have 21 stitches at the end of each row. No more increasing and certainly no decreasing. So I'll see you at the end of row 15. At the end of row 15, we're just going to work one more single crochet into the next stitch. Again, it won't change your stitch count. It just kind of lines us up on top of that little itty bitty jog where there's color. You're gonna slip stitch to fasten off your pencil color. So that nice bright yellow or orange, whatever you're using. Fasten off. Pull that nice and tight. And again, we're going to be beginning by joining our next color in that last single crochet stitch before the slip stitch and where that little fasten off is would be where we put our next stitch after our joining. We're not doing any more increasing so we will be joining here and then we'll be single crocheting our next stitch into that little space right there. So sort of a little theme happening here. <laughs> You want to grab your gray or whatever color you want to use as a sort of a divider row between your pencil color and your eraser. So gray, brown, gold, black, whatever you want to use. We're going to start with a slip knot on our hook. We're going to join with a slip, I should say a single crochet in that last single crochet stitch of row 15. So there's stitch number one of row 16. We're going to single crochet into the next stitch, which is below the fastened off knot. So we're skipping over top of that single crochet. Keep your stitches nice and tight. It helps just keep that jog of color from showing too much. And then you're going to single crochet into each of the remaining stitches all the way around. You'll still have 21 stitches at the end of row 16. And you'll be right back at the beginning where you joined your gray. At the end of row 16, you've got 21 stitches. You're just gonna join with a slip stitch to that first single crochet. That's the single crochet you joined your gray with. So slip stitch to join. We only want one row of that divider color. You can fasten off your yarn. Give it a nice tight tug on that knot. And again, we're gonna be skipping that. We're gonna be joining our yarn right here in the stitch before that slip stitch fasten off thing. So now it's time for our eraser color. I've got a nice bright pink. You can use coral, dark pink, whatever color you think an eraser looks like. We're gonna start with a slip knot on our hook. We're gonna join our yarn in that stitch, that last single crochet. I'm working over top of both my short tails. So join with a single crochet. We're not increasing, we're not decreasing. So that's the first stitch of row 17. We're going to reach across, so reach across that slip stitch to the little space underneath that little fastened off knot. You're going to single crochet, that's where your next stitch goes. Keep your stitches nice and tight, it'll make for a nice even coloring all the way around. You won't have much in the way of color jog. So it looks nice and neat and tidy. Single crochet in each stitch around. 
you're going to single crochet in each stitch around for three rows in total. So 21 stitches in each row. When you get all the way back around, your last stitch of that row 17 will be here. You're going to work directly into that stitch, that first stitch that we made for row 18. 18 and 19 are just single crochet in each stitch all the way around. I'll catch up with you at the end of row 19. At the end of row 19, we're going to single crochet once more into the next stitch. This is just so we can even up the coloring so that the last stitch sort of sits on top of that little bit of a jog there, a little join. That'll even up our coloring so it doesn't look uneven, our three rows. Then we're going to actually close row 19 with a slip stitch into the next stitch. So we're closing off row 19. For row 20, the last row of our little pencil, we want to create a drawstring row. So we're going to chain one and single crochet in the same place that we sort of slip stitch. So chain one, single crochet in the same place that we slip stitch. This is just so that our this first stitch of the row sits up a little higher than the other ones. We're going to single crochet into the next stitch and you're going to look at this row in sort of sets of three. So single crochet, single crochet, chain one, and skip a stitch. This is what creates the little eyelet for our drawstring to go through. Skip a stitch, single crochet into the next stitch, single crochet into the next stitch, chain one, skip a stitch, single crochet into the next stitch, single crochet into the next stitch, chain one, skip a stitch, single crochet into the next stitch. So it looks like single crochet, single crochet, chain one, skip a stitch, single crochet, single crochet, chain one, skip a stitch. You're going to do that a total of seven times and I'll catch up with you at the end. When you get back round to the beginning, so there's the chain one, skip one, single crochet, single crochet, the last thing you're going to do is you're, here's the last sort of stitch of the row and here's that little bump where we chained one and single crocheted in the same place to begin the row. So it looks like that. You're going to chain one after your last single crochet. You're going to skip that last stitch and you're going to join with a slip stitch to the top of that first single crochet that began the row. So you've got two single crochets, a chain one, skip one for a space, two single crochets, a chain one, skip one for a space, all the way around. You can snip your yarn. Fasten off. Make that a nice tight knot. And you can grab your yarn needle. You want to weave that tail in along the inside of some of those stitches from the last two rows. So you can go sort of slip your hook, or I should say your your yarn needle down a couple rows. That's how I like to do it. And then you can sort of weave it in underneath an unbroken line of single crochet stitches from row 18. So instead of using row 19, you can use row 18. So just run it back and forth underneath some of those stitches and weave that tail in so it doesn't want to come out. So there we go. That little pencil is 20 rows from start to finish. You can pull the little nose out, pinch it a bit to make it a little more pencil shaped. And you've got all the little parts that make it look like a pencil, including a little drawstring row across the top. So now what you want to do is grab two lengths of ribbon or tie or cord or whatever you want that's about 10 inches or 25 centimeters each. Or if you want, you can grab your yarn, you can use the last sort of color you were using if you've got a little bit of that left over, and just start chaining until you have a length that is about 10 inches or 25 centimeters long, and then you want to do it twice. So you want two ties. And the number of chains doesn't matter, you can actually make them a little longer if you want, or a little shorter, depending on how long you want your ties to be. But they should be big enough that they can re reach all the way around the outside opening of your little pencil and then be able to sort of knot up with itself again with enough space that you can sort of pull them. That's why I say 10 inches or 25 centimeters is a good length. So that's long enough. I don't even know how long that was. Doesn't matter. 
go ahead and make two or cut two lengths of, of tie that's about 10 inches, 25 centimeters long. I find the easiest way to thread your ties around the outside of a drawstring sack is to sort of thread one up in your yarn needle and then you can just use your yarn needle to weave it all the way around. So the first thing we're going to do is find that first hole. So find a chain one space, stick your needle through it, skip the two stitches, comes out, skip over two stitches, there's the next hole, skip two stitches, so every two stitches obviously there should be a little chain one space. Not super easy to see, but if you're looking for just those count over two stitches, you'll find the space, and then the last two stitches through that space, and it's going to come out the same little space that it went in. And then you take the two ends of your ties and knot them together. I'm trying to keep the knot as close to the end as possible. There we go, nice and tight. And then you're going to do the same thing going in the opposite direction. So whether you're using ties or ribbon, I like ribbon for this, but yarn works just as well. You can find a space. So let's see, there's where it came out there. And you're going to sort of enter on the opposite side of that string so that you can have your ties coming out both sides. So you just basically do exactly the same thing in and out, in and out, every two sti stitches, but from the opposite end of your little pencil. Get both your ends together out the same little space, knot them together nice and tight. And then I like this because it's easy to cinch up the end of your little pencil. <laughs> and you can just sort of poke your fingers in there and pull it apart to pluck whatever plump plunk plop or plunk <laughs> whatever it is you want to keep inside your little pencil dongle bag and keep it handy so it doesn't get lost in the bottom of your bag and there you go <laughs> and there you go a cute little pencil shaped drawstring sack to keep your small necessaries close at hand <laughs> as you head back to school or the office or wherever you may be off to this fall. We hope you enjoyed stitching these up together with us this week, and we will see you soon here on the Jaden Stitches Show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have an awesome week. Bye, everybody. Hi, everybody. Miss Stern Stitches here. Thank you for watching today. Here are some of our other videos you might be interested in. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe.